Cyberpunk 2077's patch 1.6 is finally here, and this is one of the big ones. This had one of the longest dev times of any patch for Cyberpunk, and it's added in a variety of genuinely useful and interesting new features to check out. There's a whole host of new weapons, and even some weapons that aren't new got overhauls or pretty much complete redesigns, but everything isn't perfect with this patch, and it definitely comes with some bugs and even performance issues for some players, and even some secret new features, some of which are actually pretty game-changing. The patch itself was actually a pretty big download being about 14 gigabytes for PC users and much larger at 40 gigabytes for console players. But there are quite a few new features here, one of the most notable being Transmog is finally added into Cyberpunk with the new wardrobe system. This is pretty neat, how it'll work is you must head over to one of your apartments and go to the wardrobe. Here you'll basically have 6 different outfits to choose from where you can build a look, a style for your character using all of the various clothing you have in your stash and on your inventory right now. And you'll notice as you scroll through these, there's no quality or stats here, it's all just based on the visuals of these items. After you build out one or several of your new outfits, you'll be able to equip it, and it basically applies as a skin over your current armor configuration. Whatever outfit you just equipped is now how you will look. And although you're only able to actually build out these outfits at your wardrobe at your apartment, you can go in your inventory and pick between the different presets or even equip or de-equip one of the outfits. The way this will work is basically whatever armor items you have equipped in your inventory are what your armor stats will be. But the way you will visually look is whatever outfit you have on. So if you're exploring and find a great armor piece, you could pick that up and equip it and it won't actually change your visual appearance, it'll just use the stats from that armor piece. It's a pretty simple system, but definitely a good one and what a lot of people have been wanting for a long time. I honestly can't think of any other features I would personally want from this and you're now able to adventure around Night City looking however you want, not having to worry about stats. I mean, technically speaking, you could wear nothing at all and explore around Night City and have incredible armor stats at the same time. All of this will probably lead to you spending a bit more time shopping for clothes, so another nice feature they added is the ability to preview clothing on your character without having to actually buy that clothing. Previewing items was actually a cut feature that was patched out of Cyberpunk in the day one patch, but it's nice to have this back in a more proper way, and these previews will show you that item with your currently applied outfit if you have one. But even further, you'll be able to edit more of your overall appearance at Ripper Docs now. With the previous update, they made it so you could change your makeup and some other cosmetic things in a mirror, but now you could change more fundamental things like your nose shape, the color of your eyes, your ears, etc. This is kind of a weird feature because on one hand, yes, you have more ability to customize your character even after initially creating your character, but technically this still isn't everything. It's like almost everything, but there's a couple of features that you still don't have access to, which is just odd to me. I think you should just be able to edit everything like you can when creating your character at a ripper dock. Either way, while you're editing your character, you'll also notice they added in a variety of new hairstyles to choose from. There are new options here for both the male and female body types, several of which are very familiar or just kind of cool or interesting in general, so I imagine a lot of people will be using these. In the patch notes, they mention how V will fidget less in the character creator now, and in my experience, that is not really true. I mean, I guess technically there may be less fidgeting, but still, as you're editing your character, your character will start touching their face or whatever aspect you are editing and move around, making it rather difficult to see what you're editing, and it's really annoying. It definitely took longer to edit this character as a result of these animations playing. This update technically came with a bunch of new DLCs, but I feel like we're all on the same page at this point. These free DLCs for Cyberpunk are basically just update features. They're not really DLCs. They're just kind of using or sticking to that naming for whatever reason. One of the biggest ones was a variety of new weapons. There are 11 new weapons in total as a part of the new weapon pack, but also a few extras that are a part of an Edge Runner's tie-in. And for two of the new weapons, you'll actually get them during totally new gigs that were added in. Concrete Cage Trap is a pretty awesome new gig. It's going to involve you having to save one of Regina's guys. This person was tracked down by Militech, and the corpos are now swarming the area and he's stashed away in one of the apartments. Things are locked down with roadblocks and just enemies all over, so you'll either have to sneak through and get to this person and sneak out, or alternatively use a mix of stealth combat or even just go guns blazing. And although the gig's relatively simple, you will have a few interactions with this person as you meet them, actually trying to get them out of here, you'll stash them away in a car as you drive off, and overall I found this gig to be pretty enjoyable. I liked the theme of it, I thought it was
was pretty fun to have this mix or different style of gameplay depending on how you want to go. But one of the most important parts about this gig is what you'll find in the apartment with this person you are rescuing and that is hypercritical. There's a new power rifle that was just added to the game and it's pretty much unlike any other weapon in Cyberpunk right now. This thing will fire explosive rounds so every single shot from it will actually knock an enemy down as well as the last shot in your magazine will always be a critical hit. And if all of that wasn't enough, it's also semi-automatic, making this just an absurd weapon to use in-game. It's basically like an anti-material rifle, but it has a pretty unique characteristic where you can't attach a scope to it. So you have this powerful rifle, but you're reduced to the iron sights and it almost makes it like a really interesting slug firing shotgun, kind of. Either way, it's a ton of fun to use and hypercritical is technically the iconic version of this weapon. You'll find it always via this gig, but it seems like there could be other regular versions in the game that don't have all of the special effects. Although personally, I haven't actually found them. Nasty Hangover is going to be a gig involving a Kang Tao Corpo. This person took company information and then went out and had a little bit too much of a good time. So that company information ended up getting stolen by the 6th Street Gang, and we are tasked with getting it back from the 6th Street Gang. You're gonna have some choices around the outcome here, and depending on what choices you make, different things will happen, but I won't spoil that. Although at one point during this gig, you're gonna head over to the 6th Street Warehouse, and on the table here, you'll be able to find another one of the new weapons with the Sanko LX. There's going to be a new tech SMG with a very unique design. With just a tap of the trigger, whether you're aiming or not, it's going to fire a three round burst. But of course, the iconic part of tech weapons is as you aim down sights and hold down the trigger for a couple of seconds, you'll get the unique mode. And here, that is just going to turn this into a fully automatic and very deadly SMG. It will unload the entire magazine of this weapon into whatever you're pointing at, and it actually has a pretty nice scope, which makes it all the more convenient. It is very fun to use, and it's one of those weapons where I feel like in particular, in the early game, if you get one of these, it could be really good to use against some of the tankier enemies you'll face against, especially considering it'll benefit from tech weapon perks, which could make this incredibly powerful. And something worth noting here, you'll start to notice this as I go through many of the other weapons, is you don't actually get a crafting recipe or even an iconic version of this weapon. So now, is there an iconic version somewhere hidden or stashed in Cyberpunk? I don't know. I haven't found one, but it's definitely a possibility. And if you do find that, let me know in the comments down below. At least as of right now, though, doing this gig is the way to find it. There's a third third new gig with Desperate Measures. This is almost a heist of sorts. It's going to involve you trapping and stealing a vehicle for a guy named Pedro. There's going to be some car chases as well as some vehicle combat, for better or worse. But overall, I found this to be yet another pretty fun one. I don't want to spoil the whole thing, although for whatever reason on this gig, there are no new weapons to be found, or at least I couldn't find any. And I actually looked. I actually did this gig three different times trying to find any type of new content, but it just doesn't seem to be there. Overall, when it comes to these three new gigs, I found each of them to be pretty fun. Some of them are thematically a bit similar to other gigs in the game, but in general, it was fun new content. Relatively short, none of them were super long, but all of them were engaging and interesting and definitely had a healthy amount of fresh content. These gigs will just be added to the game as you log in with the update, but if you are looking for them specifically and want to do them, these are the locations of the three and where you can start them. But looking back at some of the other new weapons that did come, the VST-37 is a new power shotgun that has been added. This is one of those ones that actually does have a static spawn location, it's going to be a part of the gig Old Friends. This is an old gig, and technically you could just go to this bar where the gig takes place at any point if you want to find this shotgun. It's just going to be down the street from MLK and Congress. In the back room of the bar, you could find the automatic shotgun on a table, and of course, that is the defining feature here. It is the first fully automatic shotgun in Cyberpunk. You can absolutely wreak havoc with this thing. It's a pretty absurd DPS, as you would imagine. But even further, shotguns really benefit from the crunch mod, so add crunch to shotguns if you didn't know that. And although it's fun and chaotic, I wouldn't necessarily say it's that much better than the other shotguns because it does get relatively hard to control. And there's not many situations in Cyberpunk where you need to be putting out this much lead that quickly from a shotgun. A lot of times you're going to fire a couple of shots then switch targets, but in general still a pretty fun integration. And although this one does have a static spawn, as you'll notice with pretty much all of these other new weapons, you'll be able to find them at weapon vendors. The only two exceptions to this are of course hypercritical because it's an iconic, and the Senko LX I just couldn't find at weapon vendors despite my testing. But basically if you're trying to find the new weapons from this patch, go to one of your favorite weapon vendors, I happen to use this one but it really doesn't matter, check what kind of stock they have, and then just wait 72 hours in game, the stock will reset and new weapons will pop up there. Do this a couple of times and after like five minutes, you'll probably have all of the new weapons as long as you have the eddies to buy them. Now, notably, these are not going to be legendary or iconic variants. 
So there may be other locations to find crafting recipes and iconics in game, but I haven't found those yet. And frankly, after searching a lot of time online, I don't think anyone else has either. The MA70HB is going to be the second light machine gun in Cyberpunk 2077. There's really not anything super unique about this one outside of it having some tracers and design overall. It's really just more the fact that there's exactly two weapons in the light machine gun category now, as well as a ton of perks that will benefit these weapons. Although I guess what some may consider a defining character is this thing absolutely smacks it does ridiculous damage in game this is me obliterating enemies on very hard difficulty and i have no perks equipped the kyubi is probably one of my favorite of the new weapons it's going to be a new power assault rifle with the very defining feature being it is semi-automatic unlike pretty much every other assault rifle in cyberpunk and cdpr definitely put in some effort to balance this one in my testing it had roughly double the per shot damage compared to other assault rifles so if you're just looking at the dps stat it may look like this does less damage but per shot since it is semi-automatic this will deal more damage. And honestly, it's just kind of fun. I personally like playing with sniper rifles or a DMR-esque playstyle in Cyberpunk, and I feel like this complements that well. It can do a lot of damage, especially if you get good at aiming it, but at least for me, on this version, I found that a vendor, there's no scope attachment. And then last but not least, we do have the Kappa Smart Pistol. And the unique aspect about this weapon is it's going to lock on on two enemies at once. So it's a relatively cheap weapon you can get with this feature, and it'll actually lock on to either two body parts at the same time, or even two separate enemies at the same time. Those were all the new ranged weapons as a part of this weapon pack. There is one more as a part of the edge runners thing, but we'll talk about that later. And I actually really like them. I thought each of them were unique and interesting. CDPR clearly looked at what weapons were available in game and tried to add things in that were different or a little bit more interesting. Although even beyond that, there are also five new melee weapons to choose from as well. And each of these are pretty naturally integrated into the world. They can pretty much all be found at a melee weapons vendor. I actually found basically all of them at this one Badlands melee weapon vendor, but CDPR definitely started to integrate some of these items into the world in a more natural way. For example, the new neurotoxin knife can actually be found stuck in the pool table in Rocky Ridge. This is one of the areas you go through during the Panam quest line. But overall, with all these weapons except for the two iconic ones I'll highlight, just go to any melee weapons vendor, wait a couple of times, and you'll be able to find pretty much all of them in the same method. The neurotoxin knife in general is a pretty cool new weapon that has a nice mix of chemical and physical damage, as well as having a chance to poison enemies without actually needing any perks or anything like that to do it. It has a cool design too, it has this little toxin capsule in the middle, which is nice. But basically, the way you want to play with this one is swing and bang with this knife, and enemies will start getting poisoned, and you'll get a good mix of damage overall, as it's almost half and half physical to poison. Although CDPR also updated and changed some of the poison-related perks, which naturally are going to be very handy to use with this one. Critical Antidote is a reworked perk that'll make it so once an enemy is poisoned, you're able to use a power attack or even throw a knife at them to deal a huge burst of damage. And in most cases, if they are poisoned and you land this, you'll just one-shot that enemy. It's a little hard to actually get this right because you have to find an enemy that you have successfully poisoned and then use that power attack on them. But again, if you do hit the criteria, you'll basically just obliterate that enemy on the spot. As well as now there's the corrosive poison perk, which will make it so poison works on drones and robots, although not as well as it does on humans. But what is far more fun to use use is the iconic version of the Toxic Knife with Blue Fang. You can find this at that same Badlands melee vendor, it seems like this is always where this Blue Fang knife will spawn, but this one's pretty special because it doesn't have a regular poison and instead a stunning poison equipped on it. The way it'll work is 3 seconds after hitting an enemy, or 1 second if you hit them in the head, a poison will sink in and stun that enemy temporarily. This is very fun in gameplay, you could basically run around and slash a bunch of enemies and then slowly they'll all get stunned for a brief duration. You'll see a little countdown timer above enemies' heads as this is happening, and it's actually just really strong. It's a consistent way to get stuns on enemies, and in particular against things like cyber psychos or just tougher enemies in general, this could be pretty game-changing, like something you should almost always have equipped. It also, of course, works as a ranged weapon if you do have that perk that allows you to throw knives, which can create some other pretty cool gameplay moments. But speaking of throwing weapons, the Punk Knife is a throwing focus knife. It has some generally nice stats, but the very notable aspect of this knife is the fast recovery time. With this update, CDPR reworked recovery times for knives, so basically how long it'll take a knife to return to your inventory after you throw it. Alternatively, you could always just pick it up. But the Punk Knife has a several second faster time than basically every other knife in the game, with the idea being you could run around, throw one of these guys at an enemy, and you don't have to wait that long for it to automatically return to you. And although that's all good and fun, the 
the unique version with Headhunter is probably more fun and probably one of the most unique weapon interactions in the game. You'll be able to find Headhunter at the melee weapons vendor in Pacifica. It's relatively easy to find, it's towards the end of Pacifica, you're probably already familiar with it. But what Headhunter does is make it so after hitting an enemy with this knife, and this could be either throwing it or slashing them with the knife, it'll actually mark that enemy. And the next headshot you land on that enemy will deal 250% headshot damage, as well as if the knife isn't returned to you, like if you threw it, it'll automatically return the knife to your inventory. So basically, land headhunter, land a headshot, and the vast majority of enemies in this game, as long as you're using a relatively high damage rifle, will just die immediately because that is an absurd amount of damage to be dealing. It definitely can be a bit OP, but honestly, there's a lot of builds or play styles in Cyberpunk that get pretty OP by the mid game, so I don't really see that as a huge issue. But if you want a super unique and super overpowered play style, what you could do is get headhunter and blue fang, go up to a tough enemy like a cyber psycho, use headhunter, and then use blue fang after, and then take out whatever weapon you have with very high per shot damage, and you're gonna have sitting in front of you a stunned enemy that you could deal 250% headshot damage to. And obviously it's going to be very easy to land that headshot because they can't move, because, you know, they're stunned. I was messing around with this quite a bit, and it is very fun, you're switching between items quite consistently, but coupling this with something like the throwing knife perk creates a really interesting gameplay loop in Cyberpunk, and I highly recommend checking it out. So both of these unique knives are going to almost certainly be OP in the game, but at the same time, almost certainly to cause you to have some fun in Cyberpunk. The rest of the melee weapons are still interesting, but not quite as intense as those two. The Cutomatic is really about the experience, it's going to be a chainsaw crossed with a sword, and all of the interesting and fun parts that come from that, but there's really not much unique going on outside of the visuals. Claw is going to be a new axe weapon in the game. It's going to be a bit heavier and have a slower attack speed, but it has a higher likelihood to crit enemies in general, so you'll be landing critical hits pretty often with this thing. And Razor is a new machete that will almost certainly get this video demonetized. It has a higher bleed chance on hit, so the likelihood to cause a bleed in an enemy, but also it has a much higher propensity to dismember enemies. Very fun, but one of the ones that I don't want to show you too much of for the sake of this video's monetization status. As I mentioned a bit earlier, each of the new melee weapons will show up at a regular melee vendor, with the two iconics having specific vendors, but they should be relatively easy to find. And overall, I think all of these new weapons from this weapon pack are really fun. The knives in particular are really unique and add in distinct gameplay styles that you just really can't get otherwise in Cyberpunk. And I would argue with patch 1.6, using Headhunter and a good sniper, you have what is perhaps the single highest per shot damage you can get in the game now. But with this update, CDPR did not stop there, and they actually went through and updated a bunch of the older iconic weapons in the game, and pretty much just reworked these almost comprehensively. Take the Stinger Knife for example. This item now has a chance to both cause a poison and bleed on an enemy, but if the enemy is bleeding, it has a 100% chance to also cause a poison, and if the enemy is already poisoned, it has a 100% chance to cause them to start bleeding. Which if all that sounds convoluted, what this means in gameplay is, as you are swinging at enemies, you are going to start dealing ridiculous damage over time, as they will be bleeding and poisoned and losing health very rapidly. One of the other cool parts about this update is they took some regular weapons and made them iconic, like the Butcher's Cleaver. With its new iconic status, it now has a higher chance to cause bleeding in an enemy, and if enemies are bleeding near you, you will go into a bloodthirsty frenzy, attacking faster and using less stamina per attack. Sir John Falistuff, which I unfortunately can't show you in all his glory, also has some special iconic effects. Damage increases with each subsequent hit to an enemy's face, so if you hit them in the face a bunch with this, you're going to deal more and more damage over time. And there's also a chance to just stun enemies when using a power attack on them. And although both of those changes are pretty handy and cool in-game, it also comes with a pretty massive benefit outside of Cyberpunk for you, the player. As now, when you have this item equipped in-game, if you're using a controller, it will vibrate consistently. And I mean, who knows? Maybe there'll be a couple of people that discover something about themselves as a result of the 1.6 update to Cyberpunk, but these updates will apply to some of the ranged iconics as well. The O5 sniper rifle got what is perhaps one of the most notable reworks, as it is now basically a ranged missile launcher, as each shot from this now will cause a massive explosion that has a chance to light enemies on fire. And the more enemies that are lit on fire by this one, the faster you'll actually reload the weapon and it'll increase your crit chance. So basically, Basically, just shoot this thing from afar, set a bunch of fires, and then do a ton more damage and reload even faster. This sniper rifle was always pretty cool 
cool and pretty fun to use in game, but now it's just absurd. I mean, like I said, it's basically just a sniper rifle missile launcher, if that makes sense. And if it doesn't, just take it into Cyberpunk, go find a bunch of enemies or get the police after you, and then go to town, because you're gonna have a lot of fun with this one. Speaking of overpowered though, sniper rifles in general actually got a bit of a nerf with this update. They'll be dealing lower damage across the board, and CDPR describes how now to get a sniper rifle to one-shot enemies, you're actually going to have to spec into certain perks. Which honestly, I don't hate. I don't hate this as a change or update in Cyberpunk. Sniper rifles were always very strong in this game, but in general, it's not very difficult to deal a lot of damage in Cyberpunk. All this really means is now you will definitely have to spend a couple of perk points on sniper rifles to make them deal as much damage as previously. But one sniper rifle you will probably be using way more often now is the Nekomata, as they had a massive change to this one. This is a tech sniper rifle, and when you fully charge it, it is now easier to aim down sights. And if you never use this, you might be looking like, okay, what's the big deal? Yeah, you're just charging the weapon, it's shaking slightly as you aim. Well, look at how things worked previously. This was incredibly hard to use, despite being incredibly powerful in past versions of the game, to the point where I just didn't use it. But now, you can actually aim with this thing, and I would argue it may just be the best sniper rifle in the game, outside of the 05, because the 05 is just ridiculous and fun. But well, that's not all, there are more changes to weapons in the Cyberpunk. The Divided We Stand assault rifle got reworked. This is a smart assault rifle. It can lock onto up to five enemies at a time. With this update, it got its accuracy lowered, the reason being, now sometimes if your shots miss, they'll explode into a cloud of poison, poisoning literally all of the enemies that walk through that cloud. This is pretty awesome to use, it definitely makes it one of the most unique weapons to use in Cyberpunk, and it almost makes you feel like Batman or some kind of superhero as you just fire a bunch of shots and slowly see clouds of poison take out all of your enemies. And the Yinglong SMG got a similar treatment, it now has a notably higher chance to cause EMP explosions as well as a larger magazine overall, where now you can basically just take this smart weapon, spray it into the general direction of enemies, and see all kinds of EMPs going off in the distance. So with this update, CDPR definitely paid special attention to a bunch of the weapons, making a lot of weapons you probably ignored outright now very interesting and very viable to use. Unfortunately, this came at a cost, as there were nerfs to other weapons in the game. Tech precision rifles, in particular, can no longer use scopes, so things like the Achilles, which is one of the most powerful early game options, can no longer have a scope attached to it. And what seems to be one of the other undocumented changes is a bunch of weapons had either their level requirements or even their attribute requirements changed. So you may load up your character and discover that a bunch of weapons in your inventory are no longer usable because you're not a high enough level. Or even something like the O5 sniper rifle doesn't actually unlock its full potential until you have 20 body. You could get that sniper rifle pretty early on, I think a lot of people do, but it's going to be hard to use until you get your body stat all the way up to 20. Which, considering how overpowered it does feel at points, it does feel like this is a necessary or relatively balanced trade-off, but overall, a bunch of weapons, even some of the less notable ones, got their level requirements increased with this update. But as compensation for that slight, CDPR made one of the biggest changes to the game, where you could no longer craft too much ammo. I wouldn't be shocked if a lot of people didn't even know this was a thing, but basically in Cyberpunk, there was no limit on how much ammo you could craft, you could just craft it endlessly. But there was a limit to how much you could hold, so you could keep crafting ammo accidentally and you were just deleting components because you can't actually hold that ammo, because you were crafting nothing, because you hit the ammo limit, but the game didn't actually tell you that. Now the game will tell you that, and will block the ability to craft ammo any further, which is a very nice and a long overdue change. I think I pointed out this issue in one of my first videos of Cyberpunk right around release. This update was dubbed the Edge Runners update, and although I feel like that's really just marketing, there are some tie-ins to the anime. You can begin the newly added quest by going to Mega Building H4 in Santa Domingo. Basically run around the tall building for a little while until you actually find this little alleyway that does have this symbol, and you will find a brain dance here. I showed this brain dance during the live stream. I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it. It's pretty cool in the anime style. The story here is that this building is actually where David Martinez, one of the main characters of the anime, lives. You basically text a fixer inquiring about David Martinez and who that person is, and you have to wait 24 hours as they look around. Or actually, more than 24 hours? I'm not sure if the quest dialogue or prompt is just bugged as waiting 24 hours didn't actually update the quest. This happened to me, and it's been happening to a ton of people. I did eventually get it to progress. Basically, what I did was just fast travel around. Sometimes there's a thing in Cyberpunk where you need time to pass by 24 hours, but skipping time doesn't actually register that. So you could try fast traveling from one edge of the map to the other edge several times in a row, where some people had success with sleeping in their bed for a while. They actually added in the ability to sleep for as long as you choose, up to 24 hours now. But from there, after you progress the quest, it's relatively simple, and in the end, you'll end up getting 
getting David Martinez's jacket, which does look pretty awesome. I can see a lot of people using this, in particular with that new wardrobe mode. Separately, you're also able to find the weapon Guts in the game. It's going to be a completely new shotgun, and it's actually going to be just placed on the ground in a bush in Memorial Park. They mentioned how there's going to be several items from the anime secretly placed in Cyberpunk, and I imagine this is one of them. This weapon is insane. It's actually kind of absurd how much damage this deals for a shotgun, but it has insane recoil as a trade-off. This is typically how things work if you don't have enough body requirement, but I do have enough body requirement for this weapon, or at least it wasn't telling me I needed more, so I think this is just how it's intended to be. And although the damage by itself is pretty insane, it also has a 100% bonus to headshot damage, which being able to do that consistently with every Every single shot is pretty ridiculous, and this will deal a lot of damage throughout the game, especially considering you could just find it here and get it relatively early on. It could be a great weapon to get early in the game. But there are some other new things added. The polycarbonate nano weave techie harness is this high-tech armor piece that can now be found in a garage you're able to break into. It's a pretty simple armor piece overall, but I think a lot of people like the look of it, and you'll more or less be able to find it down an alley near the Ventura and Skyline fast travel point. It's pretty simple, just fast travel here, run down, and you'll see this alley open up run down here and you'll be able to open the garage. With the last update, burnout mode was added and some vehicles got their burnout mode tweaked, so they may feel a bit different on launch. Even further, there used to be a bug where you would actually break if you were reversing at very low speeds. This was very frustrating, very annoying, and it was fixed. They added some additional colors to the neon lights on motorcycles. There's a new performance version of the Thornton Colby, which I cannot find for the life of me. It seems like this is one of those vehicles that will just spawn in the world. You can't actually add it to your garage, but you might just find it driving down the road. If you find this, please show me or tell me because I've been looking and I cannot find it. The graphic options on PC were adjusted somewhat with this update. So now there's actually higher quality presets that you can choose from one choosing a preset in Cyberpunk. And it seems like this may have had the unintended consequence of making people's performance worse. I'm not totally sure what's going on here, but there's a ton of people on PC that report having pretty notable FPS drops after launching Cyberpunk with patch 1.6 like 10 to 15 FPS in some cases, and I think what may have happened, but this is really just speculation by me, is for whatever reason they're defaulting to this highest preset, which in turn means the game is looking slightly better, which in turn means that you're actually getting less performance. So what I would do is tweak around your settings, look up some recommended settings for the game, and hopefully this isn't actually a problem with the game as much as it's a problem with the preset that was automatically applied when you loaded the game. I know though there are some issues with PC performance on consoles at least, there's a lot of people reporting better performance with this update. Well, of people reporting just notably higher FPS. Nothing crazy, but 5 to 10 FPS here or there, even lesser in some areas, but definitely a gain. Nothing bad at all. Which, speaking of gains for consoles, there's actually a couple of cool new features coming to consoles. The Xbox Series S got a new performance mode, so you're now able to actually play the game at 60 FPS consistently. This will come at a cost to resolution though, so basically your resolution will now scale between 800p and 1080p, meaning if you're playing on this performance mode, a lot of times you will be playing below 1080p. To me, I think the FPS boost is worth it. I very much so prefer higher FPSs in games, and especially 60 FPS is a big one. But at the very least, it's very nice to have that option now. And another pretty awesome option that was a secret update with this patch is keyboard and mouse support is now available on Xbox. It seems like this was partially added in the past, like you could just use a keyboard in the past, but now you can play the game fully with a keyboard and mouse on your console, which there may be some of you playing on consoles even though you never did before because this update also added in cross saves. Now you're able to save your game on PC and then load that save on another PC or even just on your console and pick up exactly where you left off. I feel like this is a pretty niche benefit overall, but for the people it does benefit, this is huge. If you're somebody that does have both a living room setup as well as an office or desk setup, you could literally just save the game and then pick up in another room or on a different device, which is absolutely awesome. Although it does have some weird consequences in game, saving and at times even just dealing with the save menu took a lot longer in game now. And this even applied to quick saves. It's not really the best example, but I had some quick saves while I was filming this video take up to 10, 15, 20 seconds at a time, which was this weird situation where I quick save for a reason and then I wasn't sure where the save would be saved. So I didn't want to continue playing in case I died or lost progress if the save didn't complete right. And as far as I can tell, there wasn't actually an easy way in game to turn cross saving off. Even though it's a feature I'm not going to really be using, I was automatically opted into it as a result of being logged in. But perhaps the most important new feature of all is Rotrace. There's a new arcade game that you can access in some of your apartments or even just the arcades scattered around Night City. As you play this game, if you get into the top five, you can win some rewards, they'll be sent to you. And if you get first place, you will be able to unlock this new outfit. You're now able to put nibbles in photo mode. You basically have to switch to nibbles 
nibbles as a character and then turn them on. It's pretty cool. I'm not really into photo mode, but I imagine a lot of people really like this. So we'll probably get some awesome pictures as a result, but hey, CDPR, where's my iguana in photo mode? I know though throughout this video, I touched on some of the undocumented or otherwise secret features that came with this update. There are definitely some other ones. Explicitly in the patch notes, CDPR listed how there would be secret changes and these secret changes wouldn't be available on last gen consoles. They've done this with a couple of patches now. And in particular with patch 1.5, they were pretty obvious, like a mini quest you could do in game and a few other things to find. But it definitely seems like with patch 1.6, some of these may be a bit more obscure. There definitely is this new police encounter that you can stumble upon, thanks to Advent Rain for sending this over. And it's a pretty cool one that you could just find in Night City. But almost certainly there are more random encounters or random things to stumble upon and find, but at least as of right now, not many have been found. I definitely will have a full and dedicated video looking at some of the things that have been changed in the future, but at least as of right now, if you've found anything, let me know. Although patch 1.6 definitely doesn't bring Cyberpunk 2 being a perfect game. As I was filming this video, I definitely encountered and noticed a bunch of different bugs. A lot of these being relatively minor or funny, but still there. It's not perfect and definitely not bug free. Although one of the funniest was definitely my ability to shoot somebody into a floor, which is kind of overpowered. Although this update also did contain a ton of bug fixes. I'm not going to get into all of them in this video. I think this video is long enough at this point anyway, but some of the interactions with NPCs on the street and their reactions were improved as well as a bunch of quests and gigs did get improvements. Overall, patch 1.6 for Cyberpunk is genuinely some of the most fun I've had with a new update for this game. I feel like with this update compared to a lot of the other ones, there's a lot of new content to actually play with and experience. It's really those new weapon changes in particular. They're just fun. It's fun to try out different builds or try out different weapons that you otherwise were probably ignoring. You know, though it's probably not the biggest patch for the game, it may be my favorite patch we've gotten thus far, even out of the major ones. There's a lot of really great content here, and there's only more coming with the new mod tools. Unfortunately, PC only as of right now, but if you don't don't have Cyberpunk on PC, you can use my affiliate code and get it on GOG down below and I will get a bit of a kickback. Otherwise though, I encourage you guys to subscribe. More Cyberpunk content is coming, both when it comes to mods and those secret new additions. As always again though, I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all next time. Later.